was wonderful. She rejuvenated, you know. This is what the prosperity is all about. Yeah, yeah. Now, we've got a second person because we want to get some dynamic diversity here, and we've got it today. The second person is a, to say unique, I don't think unique would do it. Extraordinary probably wouldn't do it. Probably probably wouldn't do it. Fantastic probably wouldn't do it either. Then we put all those words together, we would be able to get a clue into the magnificent mind of the next person we're bringing on. I first saw Mr. Ever Lawson bounding, and I mean literally bounding, across UC Berkeley's campus as a Botol law student. And I thought, how oh, odd, uh, this man was bounding across in a uh, Italian made suit, uh, t shirt, and no socks. Uh, coming from the Midwest, that was just, you know, un <laughs> And they thought, this is California, but even that strange for California, right? I mean, why do you have this Italian mix? It's obviously a mistake here somewhere. Um, to my surprise, I was answering some, uh, an ad, uh, advertisement about some uh, research, and he turned out to be the Edward Lawson, uh, who was known as the California Walkman. Not only does Lawson walk everywhere he goes, he's a tall and, as you can see, muscular, dreadlocked African American man who values his privacy and his Fourth Amendment right against unreasonable search and seizure. As a result of his appearance, attitude, and race, Lawson was stopped over 15 times for vacancy in the San Diego area, usually in white neighborhoods between 1975 and 1977, under a law that requires an individual to provide a suspicious police officer with, quote, reliable and credible, unquote, identification. He was prosecuted twice, convicted once, and eventually took his case to the Supreme Court. In 1983, the court found the California vacancy law to be unconstitutional due to its vagueness. It did not, however, address the constitutional Fourth and Fifth Amendment violation questions that Lawson raised. As a result of his California Walkman case, Lawson has received extensive media coverage. He has been on the front page of the New York Times, the Washington Post, the Los Angeles Times, the Philadelphia Inquirer, the Miami Herald, the Atlanta Constitution, the Chicago Tribune, and the Boston Globe. He has also appeared on several talk shows, including the Oprah Winfrey Show, Donahue, Nightline with Ted Koppel, CNN's Crossfire, the Today Show, and Good Morning America. Lawson is a popular lecturer, art, actor, writer, and director. He appeared in the Alan Rudolph film, Choose Me. In addition to overseeing two companies, he is also working on a syndicated television show, talk show, and forming a nonprofit organization to help citizens represent themselves in court called Pro Per. Edward is not only an extraordinary individual, he has a great mind, a great consciousness. He is one who definitely not only puts his money where his mouth is, but also with his dedication. He's probably one of the most committed and dedicated people I've ever met in my life, one of my mentors and supporters, one of my friends and colleagues, Edward Lawson. Let me repeat what has already preceded me in part. Uh, I am Edward Lawson. I come to you this afternoon under the aegis, the imagination, and the great effort of the Cincinnati Business Incubator. I come to you partly in my capacity as the executive director of an organization called Proper Incorporated. We are a Beverly Hills-based think tank. In all of that, I will say to you my primary expertise, what I came 2,000 miles to share with you, that which I have, which I feel I can give to you, and then you, in turn, can give to your business, 
You, in turn, can walk out of here and give to your community. You, in turn, can walk out of here and contribute to the quality of life that you are going to live for the rest of your days. That one specific thing. Supreme over whatever else I may be able to give to you. In I, I am like Marva Davis, like Jamila Harris. I am an architect of the impossible. I'm here to talk about two things. I am here to address two questions, talk about two things. The first thing I'm here to talk about is you. I came here not to talk to this group, not to address remarks to a crowd. I, Edward Lawson, one individual, came here to personally talk to you as an individual. The second thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about history. And I'm going to talk about what history has made you. I'm going to talk about your history. And let me make this clear. If I'm talking about two things, one, I'm going to talk about you, and two, I'm going to talk about what history has made you. Because of what history has made you, when I said I came here to talk about you, you, you said, no, no, you mean the person sitting next to me. <laughs> because what history has made you, when I said the first thing I'm going to do is talk about you, he said, well, no, he means someone else, somewhere else, some other time. I came here to talk about you. And I came here as the architect of the impossible to talk about you and what history has done to you with the specific intent to do some business. To do some business with your most important asset. Not your inventory, not your line of credit, not your employees, not whatever you have in terms of your future business plan. I came here to deal with the most important of your business, and that is you. Get bank loans from now until the year 2000. If you, as the most important asset in your business, is not a liable asset, it's not going to work. Your personnel department can get you the best employees in the world. If you, as the first asset of any viable business, are not in order, it will do you no good. And it goes on. And it goes on. As the most important asset in your business, we have to then ask the question, what made that asset what it is today? As the most significant element in the portfolio that you offer to your clientele, we have to ask the question, who or what has made you who you are? has made you who you are as an African-American, has made you as you are as a business person. The question largely is answered by a very interesting concept, a word that you've heard before but you have been misled, and that is history. History has made you what you are. History is what has built that internal individual that we cannot see, we can only see the outside. History. Now, because some of you have accepted the notion that I came here to speak personally to you, some of you are still fighting. Some of you, just to prove that you are stronger than me, you are still saying, no, somebody next to me is who's talking about. Fine, you will win. Some of you who accept the idea that this man actually came here to talk to me and said, well, he said history. Now, I better start thinking quickly because he may start asking questions. 